Hey there, I'm Alexandra, a senior technical writer for Chrome, but I wear many hats. <laughs> Today, I'll be your personal Google I.O. recapper. Think of me as a TLDR come to life, sharing the top 10 web announcements from Google I.O. 2025 as fast as I possibly can. I feel like I'm on the clock here, so let's get going. Kicking us off, we have a web classic that my favorite Chromies have been working on for quite some time, carousels. With the new CSS primitives that landed in Chrome 135, you can build interactive carousels with just a few lines of HTML and CSS. Pinterest used to have nearly 2,000 lines of JavaScript for its close-up carousels, because of course, it's JavaScript. Nothing is simple. Since adopting CSS carousels, Pinterest has reduced its code by 90% to about 200 lines of CSS. And now it takes 15% less time to load a pin. Think of what you could do with those milliseconds. New in Origin Trials, we have the Interest Invoker API. This experimental API lets you declaratively toggle popovers when visitor interest is active for a short time. Combine it with APIs like anchor positioning and popover, and you can make interactive, responsive UI elements entirely built in CSS. No JavaScript needed. How's that for saving time? If only CSS carousels could save me some time in this recap. Last year, we announced built-in AI APIs, which help you perform specific tasks using client-side inference. These APIs give you our leading models, including Gemini Nano performing AI right in the browser. Today, the Summarizer, Translator, and Language Detector APIs are available in Chrome Stable for your web apps and extensions. And in Chrome Extensions, the Prompt API is stable too. Picking a favorite API is like picking a favorite child, but let's do it anyway. My favorite ones are the Writer and Rewriter APIs, and they're now in Origin Trials. These APIs are really useful when writing things like blog posts. You can use the Writer API for a little inspiration when you're starting your first draft. Then use the Rewriter API to try out different versions and adjust for things like tone. You can also use these APIs to speed things up. For instance, Deloitte's been experimenting with Chrome's built-in AI APIs across the Deloitte engineering platform to improve its onboarding experience and navigation. After Deloitte put the prompt, summarizer, writer, and rewriter APIs to work, its employees were projected to find what they need 30% faster. It's also easier for them to share clearly written feedback to improve the onboarding platform. We're also fired up about the prompt API's new multimodal capabilities, and so is Adobe. The team has been experimenting with the Prompt API to instantly create summaries from scanned documents in the Adobe Acrobat Chrome extension. All of this happens within the browser. Wish I had that while I was in school. Not that I would have used it, of course. Early preview program participants can check out these built-in AI APIs, so what are you waiting for? It's time to sign up. Got devices that can't run client-side AI? Don't worry, we have a solution for you. We are collaborating with Gemini and Firebase to bring you a hybrid AI experience on all browsers and devices. And let me tell you, our collaboration was lit. Come on, I had to do that. This fire <laughs> teamwork means you can now build web experiences that default to using client-side AI whenever possible and fall back to server-side as needed. So, you can build a unified experience for your users, no matter what device they use. You can access Gemini Nano and the built-in AI APIs with Firebase or the Gemini Developer API. Speaking of Gemini, you can use AI assistance in Chrome DevTools across the Elements, Performance, Network, and Sources panels. Now you can easily reference context from your page and simply chat with Gemini about it. If you're using AI assistance for styling, you can also directly apply suggested changes to your local workspace. If you're in the performance panel, you can debug even faster by combining AI assistance with the other panel improvements, including access to local data and core web vitals, along with the insight sidebar that brings Lighthouse to your traces. Okay, we're more than halfway through. And while I'm feeling the time crunch, recapping IO isn't complete without some baseline updates. Many of your favorite tools now have baseline integrations. You can see the baseline status and browser support for features in IDEs, such as VS Code, as you're building. ESLint gives you a heads up when you're about to use a feature that's newer than your baseline target. And RumVision combined baseline data with real user metrics, making it easy for you to select the baseline version that works best for your users. 
if you want a bird's eye view of Baseline, the web platform dashboard has you covered. For the first time ever, the web features data set is 100% mapped. You can now see the baseline status of every single feature across all major browsers, starting from when the features are first available all the way to when they become interoperable, which is just a fancy way of saying that the feature is supported by all browsers. We also rolled out developer trials for improvements to the Credential Manager API on the web. I don't know about you, but logging into anything is starting to feel like a chore. There are passwords and identity federation and pass keys. So we're improving the experience by letting web developers request credentials for the user and showing them in a single UI, making it easier and quicker to log in. When it's all rolled out, Chrome and Google Password Manager will display a user's available credentials. That's passwords, pass keys, and identity federation all in one place. This means no more asking yourself, do I even have an account on this site? Or how did I sign in last time? We've got your back. Last but not least, we've got updates for Chrome extensions. Many of you said publishing extensions in the Chrome Web Store can feel stressful. We heard you and we got you. The Chrome Web Store team is actively working on making publishing an extension to the Web Store more efficient and secure. For example, you can now cancel a pending submission. The ability to change our minds, no strings attached, we love to see it. And that's a wrap. The time we spend together always flies by. If you want to know more about anything we talked about, check out developer.chrome.com and web.dev. And now that we're all friends, come say hi on our social platforms. Until next time. Oh, <laughs>